Our dynamic pricing solution is a way to do continuous learning. Now, typically with a project, you might have historical data that you model and then you visualize. And this is a way machine learning, other advanced analytics projects work where everything is at rest and you make decisions off this data. However, if we can go ahead and bring in real time data and deploy this model in real time, visualize that in real time, then we can observe how this model is performing in real time. And furthermore, we can continue to develop new models on new data. And then we can determine if we want to compare those models to our existing models and potentially replace those models, developing a rebase loop. Uh, we use an approval process and rebasing this model allows for continuous learning. So in this demo, we're going to show such a workflow with this rebase loop using insurance data for a dynamic pricing algorithm in insurance. This demo looks at motor vehicle policies in particular. In this master data, each row is a unique quote with many attributes, including the customer's driver's license status, their occupation, where they're from, the number of years they've been with the insurer, and how many products they have with the insurer. Based on my target variable of policy renewed, I can quickly see which quotes resulted in non-renewal and those that resulted in renewal. Taking this a step further, the dashboard allows me to easily explore distributions of individual numerical and categorical variables. As I select them from these lists, it changes the bar chart and box plot respectively. I can still view details of selected data if I'd like. On this page, I'll use TIPCO's Enterprise Runtime for R, otherwise known as TEAR, to find variable importance. By hitting this button, a chi-squared method is run with TEAR to determine variable importance. The Pareto shows the strongest predictors by strength of association, and my list box is now sorted by that variable importance. I see here that the number of products a customer already has is the strongest predictor on whether or not they'll renew their policy. Next, I'm going to remove variables with high collinearity in preparation for a predictive modeling. Using a Kramer's V matrix, I see darker values for variables that are highly correlated. I can select all of my categorical predictors and rerun this calculation. The matrix generated across all predictors points towards claims cost and membership as predictors I may want to exclude from the model. At this point, I can use the initial insights gathered to actually create a supervised machine learning model in Spotfire. We see here some model parameter selections and outputs. I still want my response variable to be policy renewed since I'm trying to predict which quotes are more likely to be renewed, but now, below this, I have a predictor selection list sorted by strongest predictors. I'll select the top view and exclude membership, which had high collinearity. Below, I can choose between five supervised learning models. Logistic regression is already available natively in Spotfire, but here I also have included naive Bayes, neural networks, random forest, and lasso regression as methods. Using the R package called Parallel, I can individually assign specific cores on my machine to the different models I'm running. Hitting this button will run all the models in parallel using Tear. If I wanted, I could also change simple modeling parameters like test set size, hidden layer nodes in the neural network, and number of trees in a random forest. Running all these models in parallel completed in 19 seconds. I see each model plot on the ROC characteristic curve, and below I see more detail confirming for me that the logistic regression is the best model available, and random forest is the worst. I also have measures for area under the curve, mean cross entropy, and RMS error. Next, I can use custom R graphics in Spotfire to view diagnostics on each model. For this neural network, I see five hidden layer nodes and two bias nodes. I also see the 52 input nodes and can read all of this in the summary where I can see other information like weights used. Each model creates its own diagnostic plot, but I want to stick with logistic regression since it was my strongest model. Here I see a Cook's distance plot showing me some quotes that were outliers, and I also see a useful quantile quantile plot. Now that I've selected my logistic regression model, I want to deploy it into the real-time streaming engine run by TIPCO Streaming. On this page, I get a good overview of all the historical models that have been deployed before, including the model ID, the timestamp it was deployed, who deployed it, and what type of model it was. Clicking different models gives me additional model details as well. For my current model, I have an auto-generated model ID, and I can choose where I want to store this model locally, as well as the location of the artifact management server for TIPCO Streaming. I'll hit send to send my new logistic regression model to the AMS server for approval. Now let's look at monitoring and managing in real time. In TIPCO Spotfire, I can see real time quotes coming in with different attributes such as county and age band. The top tree map is colored by the average quote price for each age band with darker colors for higher average quotes in that age group and larger tiles for more quotes overall in that age group. I can click the charts to drill down on the data. 
This is not anything predictive, it's just a live feed of quotes coming in with no predictive statistics applied. The predictive model I sent to Tipco Streaming isn't implemented yet. It's waiting for me in the artifact management server where someone like the head of pricing can choose to approve or reject it. I'll approve it. Now in real time, I'm seeing batches of new quotes coming in every few seconds from Tipco Streaming's live data mart. Using Tear and Spotfire, my predictive model is refitted with this new data and a probability of renewal is calculated. At the top, I see a distribution of these probabilities, and at the bottom, I see details about each individual quote with a probability of renewal calculated. The right panel is a view of the JSON data coming from the live data mart that is parsed and used in Spotfire calculations. As new data comes in, the model is continuously retrained and it can be rebased back into the streaming workflow. This can be triggered by specific calculations, such as when a new model outperforms an existing model. To manage this continuous operation, Spotfire triggers an email system that sends an email to someone like the head of pricing when a new model is available. From that email, they can see some basic diagnostics or they can click the link to get a more detailed Spotfire analysis of the model diagnostics. Side by side in the bar chart, my existing model results are shown as a champion model and my new model is shown as a challenger model. I can see how the new model is performing compared to my older model in the test data below. To the right, I see diagnostic plots for ROC and lift. If I'm satisfied with the new model, I can return an AMS straight from Spotfire in my browser and choose to accept it, or I can reject it if I'm unsatisfied. Now in summary, let's close out with a quick review of the entire solution. Following our process, historical quote data is both visually and statistically analyzed in Spotfire. This is used to determine the strongest variables that predict policy renewal. Spotfire is then used with TIBCO's Enterprise Runtime for R to evaluate multiple machine learning models within seconds. From here, the best model can be selected and deployed in real time. The real time engine uses the model to calculate the probability of renewal for each customer quote within milliseconds. And this time, it also calculates the optimal commission discount based on the broker's commission or if the customer should possibly be blacklisted based on their quote requesting behaviors. Data from incoming quotes are visualized in real time back in Spotfire. The viewer is able to interact and explore real time data as it's captured, just like any other interactive dashboard. Separately, new batches of data are imported for rebasing the model. If the new model begins to outperform the existing model, an email alert is sent to decision makers with summary information and they can jump directly into a web based analysis comparing the two model results. After deciding to approve, the model is sent into production and the process continues repeating itself. Real-time model rebasing allows businesses to use the power of artificial intelligence to adapt rapidly to real-world changes. 